Hey everybody, so this research paper is called The Illusion of Diminishing Returns, Measuring Long Horizon Execution in LLMs, put out by University of Cambridge, the Inter Institute for AI out of the University of Stuttgart, Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, uh, Ellis Institute, University of Southampton, and Tabungen, I think, AI Center. Uh, and this is a preprint, so just to know, it hasn't been peer-reviewed yet. This is going to be peer-reviewed by a lot of peers of theirs, I'm sure. Uh, and then highlighting, like, uh, this is super cool. I, I don't see this in a lot of research papers. I wish I saw this in more research papers. They released both their uh, GitHub repository and their data set, and they actually released it with the the um, release of their paper, which, like, uh, oftentimes they say we release the code, and they don't actually have the code. So I checked the code. It's all here. <laughs> and then also, too, they released their execution, their long horizon execution data set, which uh, is like their benchmark. We'll dive deeper into this as to exactly what this is, why this is important overall, et cetera. <clears throat> the bottom line of this research paper overall is, is that they uh, essentially go against the uh, wisdom, the conventional wisdom, and what has become conventional wisdom with regards towards uh, scaling of LLM models. I'll just read through the abstract here, uh, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into that, and then I have kind of, I'll break down the gist of this paper here. So on the abstract, does continued scaling of LLMs yield diminishing returns? Real-world value often stems from the length of task an agent can complete. We start this work by observing the simple but counterintuitive fact that marginal gains in a single-step accuracy can compound into exponential improvement in the length of a task a model can successfully complete. Then, we argue that failures of LLMs when simple tasks are made longer arise from mistakes in execution rather than an inability to reason. We propose isolating execution capability by explicitly providing the knowledge and plan needed to solve a long horizon task. We find that larger models can correctly execute significantly more turns even when small models have 100% single turn accuracy. We observe that the per-step accuracy of models degrades as the number of steps increases. This is not just due to long context limitations. Curiously, we observe a self-conditioning effect. Models become more likely to make mistakes when the context contains their errors from prior turns. Self-conditioning does not reduce by just scaling the model size. In contrast, recent thinking models do not self-condition and can also execute much longer tasks in a single turn. We conclude by benchmarking frontier thinking models on the length of tasks they can execute in a single turn. Overall, by focusing on the ability to execute, we hope to reconcile debate on how LLMs can solve complex reasoning problems, yet fail at simple tasks when made longer, and highlight the massive benefits of scaling model size and sequential test time compute for long horizon tasks. And it's this last sentence here that's going to throw a lot of people off, right? And it's like... Uh, it's very easy overall to like take a stance one way or another on these things. Like uh, just hardcore, I'm going to simplify this down to the most simplistic element. It will never work, right? That's a very uh, natural to the human condition overall to do that. Uh, I, I don't like to do that and take those stances on these things specifically because of research like this. And then, I mean, what I know uh, based off of 25 years at this point overall of direct experience with IT, right? In that, like, uh, what is a wall and what is a wall today and what is a, like, isn't necessarily a wall tomorrow, right? And then uh, what you think is an impassable wall is never an impassable wall. Like, that's like, the, there's always a uh, way to go sideways, right? Uh, and then, when it comes to scaling, like it's just uh, inherent that to me that there's going to be like benefits of scaling something up, <laughs> like and then uh, so this particular research paper overall is uh, it, like in that debate realm, right? It, it like the big question, like this is a huge question. It's essentially what the United States overall, I mean, just putting it into flat out simplistic terms, is betting one hundred percent on this equation, right? Does this actual equation actually pay off? Uh, and then there's been a lot of people on the other side of this equation, a lot of research papers on the other side of this equation, but no one has tackled it directly as I've seen in this research paper. And again, they provide their code, the data set, all of their experiments within this. So if you have, like, if you want to 
go against the research within this. Like they give you all of the the tools necessary in order to do that. And then so with that being said, let's go ahead and just kind of dissect this research paper. The, the full research paper is 25 pages, uh, and I'll leave a link to all of it overall. Feel free to, to read through the whole entire thing. It's a great paper to uh, read through end to end, right? But I don't. I want to make sure to talk about a few things within this paper, and I want to make sure that I don't miss anything uh, within those points. So this research paper does a lot overall. Like uh, that abstract, there was multiple components within it, right? So diving into it, the gist is the first part is, is that small gains in single step accuracy can compound into exponential gains in how many steps a model can execute without error. And they call this horizon. This is called horizon length overall, right? And then so essentially the horizon length is what expands when you scale a model. And then so what this paper proves out is, is that that horizon length becomes uh bigger and better the more that you scale and then so what is the benefit that the ultimate benefit that you get out of horizon link you get the ultimate benefit that you get out of horizon link and that this paper proves out is that the model can complete more steps in a sequence right uh the bigger that it is and then so that breaks down into this equation for two problems the which i'll dive i'll dive deeper into the secondary problem of it but the biggest problem that i want to highlight within this or the problem that it solves but the biggest thing that i want to highlight that it solves within this uh particular first bullet point here is is that that horizon length uh means that you can essentially solve bigger and bigger problems right so if a uh let's say that you have a small llm model and then you ask it uh, like um, an expert to to model <laughs> the universe right and every single element within it, its horizon length is not long enough in order to do that. It's too many steps in order to solve that problem, uh, like 50 bajillion steps in order to, to model the universe, right? Uh, and then uh, it's so with it, whenever its horizon length runs out, it wouldn't be able to solve that. But you could 100%, according to this research paper uh, that is not yet peer reviewed, uh, be able to scale that horizon length to essentially infinity, right? And then so that if you scaled your model big enough, you would be able to create a horizon length that had within it the problem of uh, s simulating the universe overall. And then so you would be able to do that um, just by simple scaling overall. And then so uh, this paper, if you, this paper is very much arguing uh, that uh, the approach that a lot of people, including myself overall, have knocked within this, uh, which is, again, why I don't like taking very harsh and hard stances within these things, right? Because it's all debatable until you, like, we work through all these things. Um, but they're saying that essentially scaling is, uh, it, like, there will be actual returns uh, from scaling. It's not just uh, throwing billions and trillions of dollars into a money pit and that those people that are investing those billions and trillions of dollars will essentially be able to solve problems that people that don't invest those billions and trillions of dollars won't be able to solve. Uh, that's kind of what this proves out. Second bullet point within this is that they isolate execution, the not planning knowledge. So give the model a key and then that turns into a value table and a per turn plan. The model just needs to retrieve values and keep a running sum. Even with 100% first step accuracy, tax, task accuracy drops fast as turns grow. Low, longer models last longer. And then so this is that second part of that horizon link that I mentioned that it solves, right? So the second part within this is uh, so uh, up until this year, overall, a majority of, of uh, like benchmark tests for LLM models were single turn accuracy, right? Which is that like, I'll just use it in very simple terms. You ask the model, what is two plus two? The model outputs four, right? And then so if the model passes that test, it's single turn accuracy on that particular test that I just laid out is 100%. But what this is showing and, and, and what is counterintuitive within these models is that um, it's a, like if you ask that model repeatedly again and again and again, what is two plus two? Uh, eventually, it's going to drift away from the answer being four, right? And then the reason why it drifts away from the answer being four is just because of its context window gets filled up. The number of steps, it like fills up its horizon length, and then it's no longer able to just produce the same output, which is very much very counterintuitive to uh, the way that humans learn, right? So they show 
within this as this second this in this second bullet point as a step one within this particular framework uh, that there is a constant drift that occurs over steps within models very specifically because of this horizon horizon length and then it happens over multiple terms turns because that context window gets filled up so then with any model but then especially with a small model if you're asking it over and over again what's two plus two it's caught like at, the, at a certain point its context window exceeds the horizon length and it just it, it goes like off the rails right uh, and that's where you see kind of those those uh, bad results and outputs what they're showing from that and then but uh, scaling up models and then making them bigger and bigger makes them last more turns overall. So if you have a 7 billion parameter model, if you ask it 2 plus 2 equals 4, say 100 times, uh, it's going to fail one after 101 times. Whereas if you had like a, uh, say, a 100 billion parameter model or a 70 billion parameter model, that model would be able to say like, say, 500 times and it would fail on the 501st, right? And that's kind of the, what they're proving out within this. Third bullet point within this is diving deeper into this framework, right? That there's a a, uh, uh, a drift that occurs over these number of steps and, and over this horizon length. And then part of that drift is because of this self-conditioning effect. So when the history contains the model's earlier mistakes, per step accuracy degrades further beyond generic long context decay. Scaling size helps long context issues, but doesn't fix self-conditioning. And then so going back to this horizon length and then these concepts there, right? So uh, the they say it explicitly, so beyond generic long context decays. So in bullet point number two, I mentioned and I highlighted the fact and, and focused heavily on the fact that there's this uh, the filling up that context window uh, is a large part of what creates that that uh, horizon length filling up right but what they show within the, this and within this third bullet point is that there is also a secondary factor that is at play there beyond just the context window filling up and that's this self-conditioning effect which happens via the backpropagation process when the model backpropagates over its tokens, essentially like it's wrong answers, right? And then it starts to, uh, even though it's backpropagating that the answers are wrong, it's still backpropagating wrong information during that backward pass. And the fact that it's just propagating wrong information during that backward pass over and over again repeatedly leads to this self-conditioning effect where it starts to condition on that wrong data even though it's training to not condition on that wrong data. The fourth bullet point within this is all related to this, which is, and it's also related to thinking of chain of thought reasoning, especially uh, reasoning of uh, re reinforcement learning trained thinking models, which breaks this self conditioning effect and massively increases single turn execution length. So parallel test time trips, tricks like a majority vote don't match sequential thinking compute. And then so the bottom line within this is that uh, like so uh, for three years now, right, like ever since these models have uh, been in uh, ChatGPT 3.5 form and bigger, basically. There has been this uh, concept of uh, like chain of thought, like and, and should we add chain of thought reasoning to these models? Within the last year, uh, two years or so, you've seen thinking come out uh, within these models, and then there's been a lot of debate over both of these concepts as to like how and why they actually work. The the debate has shifted uh, less so into uh, like uh, do they actually work because it's like it's been proven that they do, right? So then it's becoming more like how exactly that they work, uh, and then so this particular paper offers a pretty clear and straightforward framework within that. So essentially, the again, like going back, there's two main problems within this horizon length. Problem number one is, is that the context window fills up over time and then just gets bigger and bigger, which exceeds the horizon length. Problem number two is that the model be, being a next token predictor is back propagating bad information over those backward passes repeatedly. It happens that chain of thought reasoning very specifically and that thinking mode adding those thinking tokens essentially breaks uh, and solves for both of those problems 
just with its own existence, right? Uh, and then what it does is it, it breaks the context window and it chunks the context window so that when the model is thinking, it's never thinking about the whole entire context. So then it's uh, you don't run into the, the same context filling problem because the thinking tokens literally chunk the uh, context window, right? And then so the model's only focusing on, on that context window and it's also focusing on the context window as opposed to next token prediction, which means that it's never actually, like it's not, uh, the the back propagation of the wrong information is not actually occurring on the, the full model within that because again, it's getting chunked with, by those thinking tokens uh, and then broken up. And then so it's again, just that, that process over well, overall, fixes the problem and then like this is an important thing to me to, to highlight within this and i see this i mean all the time I, being in it overall for 25 years i can't tell you how many times i've seen this uh overall now which is i get like so when people were talking about chain of thought reasoning thinking uh, models etc about these things three years ago no one was talking about them or thinking about them in these particular contexts right it was just like this is something that is uh should work in a framework that would work we didn't have enough data on it to be able to break it down very specifically to this level and explain very detailed exactly why this process is working on this level right and then so what happened and then so uh you see and just pointing it out and highlighting it that you have a situation where people are uh, much less uh, knowledgeable and aware overall of a situation and being able to uh, isolate and, and execute and, and bring it towards what the actual solution ends up being in the end without having to and, and having this deep understanding of it right bubble gum and duct tape can get you uh kind of like a uh, steel and, and AI models in the end, if you try it hard enough sometimes. Uh, and then the last uh, bullet point that they uh, introduce and that their major significant thing within this is their benchmark. So frontier thinking models can execute vastly more steps in a single turn than non thinking counterparts. Uh, they claim very large gaps across models. And then so the bottom line within this is that overall those those thinking tokens and then like it's it boils down to the thinking tokens very specifically and that that process within this is like a rocket fuel for transformers which end up being kind of like a credit card co for compute right and then so it's these two concepts coupled together which again like the people that invented these concepts and, and, and overall initially didn't have all of these things in mind but what it ends up happening and the equation and why these things are working and, and as well and it's the ways that they do is because essentially you have the transformer model that creates a credit card for the computation which then essentially gets to interact with the thinking tokens which essentially breaks down that um, that cost the, the the debt into smaller chunks and then the model is able to just as long as you're breaking it down into smaller chunks it can digest it easier and that's kind of how all of this breaks down as a bottom line as just very quick critique and limitations overall of this research paper. Uh, first of all, the task is intentionally synthetic. Uh, they're utilizing Markovian, Markovian uh, run summing. So real agent loops have non-Markovian dependencies, tool latencies, and multi-modal errors. So the transfer isn't guaranteed. Essentially, bottom line is that they're utilizing um, a lot of synthetic data and synthetic environments within all of these experiments. And then they, they come out within this flawlessly and, and they prove their experiments overall uh, but it would be hardened if they utilized um, less synthetic data and more real world examples and then the third is our uh, second is is thinking fixes self-conditioning shown for certain reinforcement learning trained models chain of thought prompting alone can still format lock or overthink under context pressure so kind of like the bottom line to highlight within this is that like uh, just implementing chain of thought reasoning isn't like the, the catch-all within this, right? That it does uh, fix within this. And then also to the, the first part within this is that like it's, uh, they haven't proven it out experimentally uh, across the board for every single uh, model and environment and training session, right? Cause they couldn't, but it's just, that's a limitation uh, of, of this paper overall. There's not many uh, to me, I think, but again, this paper hasn't been peer reviewed yet. So if you want to peer review it, uh, here it is available as a preprint. I'll leave a link to uh, both the uh, research paper here. Uh, and then if you want to um, leave, um, have access to this document, I'll leave a link there too. And then from the research paper, you can link directly to the GitHub and the data set. And if you like this content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.